PSA 2.5, normal for a 70-year-old, but a dangerous signal for a 45-year-old. Where do you stand on this PSA map? Understanding PSA levels is crucial, as they change significantly with age. Misinterpretation can cause unnecessary panic. Let's simplify PSA by age. For those 40 to 49, a normal PSA is generally lower. This chart illustrates how PSA levels typically progress through different age groups. Notice the highlighted red area. A common misconception, PSA 4.0 is normal. This is an outdated view for 2025 standards. So how often should you test your PSA? And when do you need an MRI? We'll also discuss when a free PSA test provides crucial additional information. Consider a 52-year-old with a PSA of 3.2, who was diagnosed with a Gleason 3 plus 4. Do you want to uncover which PSA level is most dangerous, even beyond your specific age? And I urge you to watch our next video, PSA Velocity. It could be the most important information you learned today. But what about PSA numbers that seem normal for your age, yet still hide a danger? This is where PSA velocity becomes your most critical tool. We explore this vital concept in our dedicated video, Understanding PSA Velocity. Don't just know your PSA number, understand its story over time. Thank you for joining us. Stay informed, stay healthy. For men aged 60 to 69, the average PSA level is slightly higher. A level up to 4.5 nanograms per milliliter might be considered normal in this group. Finally, for men 70 to 79 years old, the PSA landscape shifts again. A PSA reading of up to 6.5 could still be within the expected range. These age-specific ranges highlight why a single PSA number can never tell the whole story. This data chart clearly illustrates how PSA levels naturally increase with age. This represents PSA levels that are unexpectedly high for a particular age age group. For years, a PSA of 4.0 was considered the general cutoff for normal. But this information is increasingly outdated, especially as new guidelines emerge for 2025. Relying on a single number for everyone can lead to critical misunderstandings. Another common mistake is self-interpreting your PSA without considering your age. Your age is a crucial factor, and ignoring it can be dangerous. It can cause unnecessary panic for some, or worse, make others overlook a serious problem. So, what steps should you take to ensure you're monitoring your prostate health correctly? A frequent question I receive is, how often should I get my PSA tested? The answer isn't one size fits all, but there are general guidelines to consider. For men aged 40 to 49 with no risk factors, testing every two to three years is generally recommended. However, if you are over 50 or have a family history, annual testing becomes crucial. But when does the conversation shift from just blood tests to something more advanced, like an MRI? An MRI is typically considered when your PSA levels are consistently elevated or if a digital rectal exam raises concerns. And then there's the free PSA test, often a source of confusion. When is this additional test valuable? Free PSA helps differentiate between benign prostate enlargement and potential cancer, especially when total PSA is in the ambiguous 4 to 10 millijoule range. Let's look at two contrasting scenarios 
to truly understand the age factor. For this 52-year-old, a PSA of 3.2, though seemingly low, was a significant warning. Now, consider a 70-year-old man with the exact same PSA level of 3.2. In his case, a PSA of 3.2 falls perfectly within the normal range for his age, indicating no cause for immediate concern. A PSA of 2.5 is perfectly normal for a 70-year-old man, but that same 2.5 can be a dangerous signal. PSA levels naturally change with age. Misunderstanding this vital fact can lead to unnecessary panic or, worse, ignoring critical warning signs. Moving into your 50s, from 50 to 59, the upper limit for PSA typically rises slightly to around 3.5 milligram liters. For men in their 60s, between 60 and 69, a PSA up to 4.5 milligram liters is often considered within a normal range. And finally, for men aged 70 to 79, a PSA up to 6.5 milligram liters is generally acceptable. To visualize this more clearly, observe this linear chart. It maps average PSA levels and their upper limits across different age groups. See how the acceptable range gradually increases with age? But notice the danger zone how Those thresholds are age-specific, not universal. Now let's talk about some common and potentially dangerous misconceptions. For years, many believed a PSA of 4.0 was universally normal. However, as medical understanding evolves, a PSA of 4.0 is no longer considered uniformly normal without age contact. So, how often should you actually get your PSA tested? And when does your doctor recommend an MRI scan in conjunction with your PSA results? There's also a free PSA test. When is that truly necessary to provide clearer insights? Let's look at some real-world scenarios to truly understand why age context is so critical. Consider John, a 52-year-old with a PSA level of 3.2. Many might dismiss this as normal. However, given his age, this was a red flag. A biopsy confirmed high-grade prostate cancer, Gleason 3 plus 4. Now, let's look at Robert, who is 70 years old with the exact same PSA level of 3.2. For Robert, a PSA of 3.2 is well within the normal range for his age. His condition was assessed as completely normal. These examples clearly show why age context is paramount. But what if PSA levels are changing rapidly, regardless of age? If you want to understand how PSA changes over time and what PSA velocity reveals, be sure to watch our next video, linked right here. PSA 2.5 is normal for a 70-year-old, but a dangerous signal for a 45-year-old. Where do you fall on this PSA map? This crucial difference is often misunderstood. PSA levels naturally change with age. Misinterpreting. So how do we correctly interpret your PSA results? It starts with understanding age-specific ranges. For as you age, the normal range shits. For those 50 to 59, we look at levels up to 3.5 milig times. Finally, for men aged 70 to 79, a PSA level of up to 6.5 illg can still be considered. Here you see a clear visualization of how PSA levels typically rise with age. Notice the shaded red area. This represents the danger zone where closer investigation might be warranted, regardless of age. The biggest mistake is self-interpreting your PSA results without considering your specific age. A blanket normal value simply doesn't apply to everyone. Clear. This is why consulting with a doctor who understands age-specific ranges is absolutely vital. Your age is not just a number. So, what actionable steps should you take? For most men, regular PSA testing becomes crucial from your mid-40s. If your PSA levels are concerning, or a digital rectal exam raises suspicion, an MRI provides a clearer picture. Mr. Tan, at 52, had a PSA of 3.2. Many might think this is normal, but for his age, it warranted a dose. May me still believe that a PSA level of 4.0 is universally normal, but this understanding is outdated. 
Relying on a single number without considering your age, your health history, and other factors can lead to misdiagnoses. So with all this information, what are the actionable steps you should take? First, how often should you actually get a PSA test? For men over 50, regular testing is key, but the exact frequency depends on your individual risk factors and previous results. If your PSA is persistently elevated, or if a physical exam reveals abnormalities, an MRI can offer a detailed, non- A low percentage of free PSA can indicate a higher risk of prostate cancer, prompting further investigation. As we saw with Mr. Tan, 52, and Mr. Pham, 70, the PSA number alone is not enough. Want to understand the most dangerous PSA pattern beyond just your age and a single reading? Then watch our next video, where we delve into PSA PSA 2.5. It might be normal for a 70-year-old, but a warning sign for a 45-year-old. Mm. Where do you stand on this PSA map? Your PSA level isn't a static number. It changes significantly as you age. Misinterpreting this can lead to unnecessary panic. Too often, doctors don't fully explain PSA results in the context of your age. This leaves many patients confused. Let's break down what normal PSA looks like across different age groups. For men aged 40 to 49, we typically see an average PSA level much lower. Moving to ages 50 to 59, the average PSA level naturally begins to rise. As we enter the 60s and 70s, these values continue to increase. A PSA that's concerning for a younger man might be perfectly normal for an older one. This chart clearly illustrates the linear progression of expected PSA levels with age. Notice the danger zone shifts dramatically. The idea that PSA 4.0 is normal is an outdated and potentially dangerous belief. As you ever try to interpret your PSA results without considering your age, that's a common mistake that can lead to either undue anxiety or dangerous complacency. So knowing your age-specific normal helps you understand when to test, when to consider an MRI, or when free PSA might be helping. Now let's discuss crucial next steps based on your age. How frequently should you test your PSA? When does an MRI become an S? Consider this. A 52-year-old with a PSA of 3.2 was diagnosed with Gleason 3 plus 4. Yet, do you want to uncover which PSA patterns are most dangerous beyond just your current age? Then I invite you to watch our next video on PSA Velocity.